By popular demand, I am bringing you something so delicious, long strands of pasta coated with pesto and soft potatoes and green beans. Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale today. Okay, so a lot of you have messaged me 400,000 times over the past couple of months since the movie Luca came out on Disney uh, Pixar um, and asked me if I could make the pasta dish that is so popular in the movie. I watched that movie with Mia probably 60 times. That is no exaggeration. We love it. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, it takes place in Italy. It's a really, really cute family movie. But in the movie, they make, they serve this pasta dish called Trenetta al Pesto. Trenetta al Pesto, Trenetta is a type of pasta, which I can't really find here in the States very easily. I'm using spaghetti, you can use linguine, you can use any long strand of pasta that you like. And it's paired with a classic pesto genovese, like a basil pesto but it's also got some cooked potatoes and green beans thrown in as well, and it is absolutely delicious. The potatoes kind of make it a little bit creamy. The green beans just add a touch of something fresh. It's just absolutely delicious, and you all wanted to see it, so here we go. Okay, so I've got some water up to a boil here. This is the pasta and everything that's gonna cook in here, okay? I'm gonna salt it generously. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple of potatoes. You can really use any potatoes that you want here. Um, something, I would say like a Yukon Gold, Idaho potato, russet potato, whatever your heart desires. You wanna kinda of cut it into pieces like that, okay? I do about two medium-sized potatoes for every 10-ish ounces of pasta, because it does bulk it up a little bit. So I'm just cutting that up into some large chunks. And I've also got some green beans here. Now these are regular green beans. I do prefer thin green beans, but for some reason, and I've mentioned this before that my local grocery store, not good, no bueno. Um, they don't have thin green beans, but if they did, I would buy those. But these are just regular green beans and I've kind of cut them on a diagonal so that they were about two inches in length. Um, so here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna take the green beans and the potatoes this is not the time for crispy green beans, okay? You kind of want the green beans to be really tender. I'm gonna add them to the boiling water. They're gonna cook for about six minutes or so or until the potatoes are halfway cooked through. Once the potatoes are halfway cooked through, we add the pasta. In the meantime, I'm gonna have to retoast my pine nuts because I forgot that I left these on and these are a little bit too well done. <laughs> well, this is why we buy extra. This is why I keep extra things on hand. But this is to show you that even I, who cooks all day every day, forget about my nuts on the stove. <laughs> all I'm gonna do is just toast some pine nuts. We're making, like I said, a classic pesto genovese. You could do this in a mortar and pestle if you want to, but um, I'm just doing this in a food processor because I value my sanity. So once those are toasted and ready to go, we'll proceed. Taking my basil. This is just from the garden. Any tender stems you can keep in. If there are any really thick stems, then you might wanna take out. But these are all pretty tender, so I'm not really concerned. I love the smell of basil. The smell of basil to me just smells like Italy. I don't know, it just does. Pine nuts, not burned, but perfectly toasted. Add those right in. You know the basic principles of making pesto. I don't have to tell you, but just in case you didn't. I'm gonna do one clove of garlic, it's a pretty big, clove of garlic, um, and it's raw. So let your heart tell you when enough garlic is enough. That's totally up to you. Let's just do one big one, one little one, okay? Because I don't have anybody coming over today that doesn't like strong garlic flavor. But if my dad was coming over, I would only be doing one. A good pinch of salt. Good, 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 good. I add a little lemon, a little lemon squeeze, a little squeeze of lemon, which I know is kind of controversial, but you don't really taste the lemon because it's such a small amount, but it somehow makes everything really bright and really delicious, and I just love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulsing this. While it's pulsing, once it's sort of breaking up, I'm gonna start adding my olive oil. I'm gonna add the cheese at the end, I'll fold it in, and I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, that looks so good. Nice and green and fragrant. Beautiful. Get this all out of here and we're gonna grate in some parm. Get that out of the way. Oh, it already smells divine. You don't need a lot of pesto because pesto is super strong. 
you don't need a ton of it. Plus when we marry it with the pasta, the starchy cooking water, everything together, it's gonna be pretty phenomenal. Go ahead and grate it in your parm, and then we're gonna add in the pasta. Slur that in. Beautiful, set that aside. Okay, pasta to the boiling water. Add it right in. Boom, boom, boom. If you can find trenette, I cannot. Right in with the green beans and the potatoes. Give it a minute. Work the pasta in until it starts to bend and submerge in the water. Drained my pasta, green beans, and potatoes. I've reserved some of the starchy cooking water. I'm gonna go ahead and place it back in the big pot. You can just place it in a large bowl, but you know what I always say, I do the dishes and I ain't messing around. <laughs> now you can start adding some of your pesto. I start with about half and some of the starchy cooking water. And now you're just gonna work this all in. I'll use all the pesto because I did use about three quarters of a pound of pasta, but just give it a good stir. You want that potato to break apart, by the way. You don't, don't be too precious about it. Um, the whole point is that the potato kind of becomes soft and tender and mixes with the pasta and everything really well. My mouth is watering. A bit more of the starchy water. I mean, look at that. You know that's gonna be good. And that is it. That's how you make the famous pasta from Luca, which is really just a very traditional Italian dish to begin with, but it's so good. The potato just kind of makes every, notice that when we make regular pesto and you're, and you're sort of twirling your spaghetti and you're putting it on your plate, it's very loose. It's very, I'm going to say oily, but that's not what I mean. But it's just very loose. This is creamy and thick, and that's because of the potato. Mmm. Mmm. It is so phenomenal. The potato gives a great texture. The green beans are there for a little bite of something fresh. The pesto is perfectly balanced and delicious. I mean, you really just can't go wrong. And I'm so excited that a movie was able to bring this to life and everybody now wants to make it because it makes my Italian heart very happy. Go to lauraandthekitchen.com to get the written recipe. I don't know what I just did here. Hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.